So the question is, can he do this again? Since coming to Minnesota in 2018, his winning percentage of 233 against winning teams is fourth worst amongst quarterbacks. And since 2018, he's never won back-to-back -back games against winning teams. And so, Bobby, I know you spent part of your week putting together some tape for us to take a look at. Greeny, Kirk Cousins, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL against throwing the play-action pass. That is no secret. But what people probably don't know, that San Francisco defense, not very good in the play-action pass. Let's take a look at Kirk Cousins here. Eight-man box, Adam Thielen down at the bottom of the screen. They're going to utilize that play-action pass, not necessarily just to hold the linebackers, but to create space, help to set up the blocking, to help give Adam Thielen time to get down the field. And so what that does is it adds a tight end, it adds a running back, and it gives him more time for Kirk Cousins to throw the biggest pass of his career, the biggest completion to set up the winning score. Now let's look at the Seattle defense. They're playing against the Saints. Eight men in the box. Same way, going to try to push Cook through the seam, run the play action again, not necessarily just for the fake, but to help set up the block, take the speed off of that vaunted San Francisco pass rush, look at the space, look at the job they do, Cook right down the middle of the seam, Drew Brees slides in the pocket, delivers a dime, and if they can't get that cleaned up, Kirk Cousins will again be saying, do you like that <laughs> after that game? Do you I, expect that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I do. I expect the Vikings to win this football game, and I expect the play action pass to be a big part of it. I think that when you look at San Francisco and, and you look at their strengths defensively, it is pass rush and it is their secondary being able to play with eyes on the quarterback at all times. And so when the basis of your offense is that play action pass, one, that pass rush doesn't be, that pass rush isn't able to just go, okay, quarterback drop back. Let me just get to the quarterback point. They got to respect the run a, a little bit. And then you're going to send so many different variations of combinations with the play action route tree that it's going to, not allow those defenders in the secondary wise to just continue to keep their eyes on the quarterback. Acho, we're going to make our picks in a second, but quickly, two untested playoff performers at quarterback here. Who do you have more confidence plays Ooh. well tomorrow, Jimmy G or Kirk Cousins? To me, it's Kirk Cousins. I went back and I watched both of their games this week. I think the tide is turning on Kirk Cousins. We've been clowning him for his whole career, people. I think the tide is turning on Kirk. Okay, we're going to make our picks right now. I've already made mine. Bear in mind, I was 0-4 last week, so <laughs> <laughs> you don't even want to hear mine again. Let's start with this. Take these games in the order in which they'll be played Vikings Niners tomorrow Dan who you got I'm gonna take the Vikings I think they go on the road and get the win we've talked about the play action pass a bunch but for me it's gonna be who outside of George Kittle for San Francisco is gonna get open George Kittle's out amazing right but the Vikings defense the best defense in the NFL covering tight end somebody else besides Kittle's got to step up. I'll take Minnesota. Bob, who you got? You like that? I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the Vikings. Kirk Cousins. Wow. Monkey off his back last week. He's rolling. Hey, three for three. I'm going with the Vikings as well. We I all going to look really stunner. smart or really yeah. stupid. <laughs>